What you're looking at is the GE35 Color Effects Lights. This is the power supply that comes with it, uh, the controller from GE. And this is the first LED in the strand of colored lights. What we want to do is bypass this controller and put our own signal on this, this wire. And by doing that, we can do some neat things like control the color of all these lights. We can control the intensity and the brightness. And we can set up uh, really neat sequences or color fades. And in order to do that, we're going to bypass the signal wire. And the signal wire is the center wire that feeds into this first bulb. And what we're going to do is put our own signal on that wire. Um, so we're going to be cutting this. And yes, uh, we're going to take precaution. And we're going to take precaution by removing these labels. And then we're going to cut these wires. And we're going to interrupt that signal wire, put our own signal on it from a microcontroller. We can use something like an Arduino. And we can customize what we want to do with these color lights. Ultimately, what I like want to do is control these from the internet. So in order to do this, we need to know a little bit more. If you look at the three wires, the wire on the left is the plus 5 volt uh, line. And this is common to all of the uh, lights that are on this strand. The wire that is on the right is the ground wire. The center wire, that's the wire that has the signal. And we're going to put our own signal on that from a digital output pin from a microcontroller. In order to do that, we're going to be cutting this and splicing in our own signal. What I like to do before I do any cutting um, is indicate which one is my ground wire. So I'm going to mark this with my Sharpie. And the reason I'm going to do that is once they're cut, it's sometimes hard to track which one is which. It's easy to get things flipped. It's important when we make these connections that when you put a signal onto any kind of bus architecture like this, you need to make sure that the grounds are common with both the controller and the strands. So if we only put in a, a signal wire in the middle of this, um, the Arduino would not be able to connect to this bus. What we need to do is connect the signal wire to a digital output pin on the Arduino and also uh, make a common ground between the strands of lights and the Arduino. Here's what I've done so far. I have split off the power wire, the 5 volt line, between the controller and the light. And I've separated the signal wire, which was the center wire, from the ground. Next, I'm going to connect this power adapter that I got from Adafruit to the signal wire and the ground wire. So I'm going to connect this ground, these two grounds, to one terminal and connect the signal wire to the other terminal. As you can see, we have our connector spliced into that signal and also given us a common ground. All we have to do now is find a, uh, a regular, regular transformer connector and go ahead and connect it to our adapter and on the other side we have some wires and these wires are going to connect up to the Arduino and what we'll do is we'll find a ground wire for one side that will connect us to the ground of this uh, color lights bus and then I'm going to pick one of these pins for my digital output I'm using pin 5 in my sketch and everything is connected. In order to control these lights from the internet we need some way to make the lights addressable from the internet. There's many ways to do this. Um, the Arduino has Arduino Ethernet shields, Wi-Fi devices that will allow you to connect this uh, device directly to the internet. The way I chose to do it is to use my product which is called the IOBridge IO204 Gateway and what it allows you to do in a pretty uh, easy fashion is that you connect it to the internet via Ethernet and anything that you plug into the front of this is accessible by a web service API and you can do monitoring and control 
So I can control this relay from the internet. I can control these lights, monitor these button presses, send a tweet when this button gets pressed. I can also control uh, X10 devices with this device. Now what we're going to use it for is to shuffle serial messages back and forth from a web service to the Arduino. And what we use this for is we can connect it to Twitter and if someone tweets a certain color we can send that uh, via the IRBridge API out this open channel which is channel 4 to the Arduino. To make the connection it's pretty simple. Um, we're even going to power the Arduino with the IRBridge device and the connections are going to be uh, 5 volts and I'm going to connect this to the 5 volt line on the Arduino which is VN and then as I mentioned earlier we have to have common grounds so I'm going to, to connect the ground on the IO bridge to the ground on the Arduino as you can see once I've made the power and ground it did turn on the Arduino the last step is connecting the serial line to the serial receiver of the Arduino. So I'm going to connect that to the digital output pin on the IO204 here and connect it to the RX pin on the Arduino. We now have everything set up. Just to recap, we've interrupted the signal line on the color lights and put the Arduino in command. And to make the Arduino accessible by the internet, we connected it to the IRBridge gateway device. And we can send commands via the IRBridge API to the Arduino to set the colors on our strands, to set the intensities. We can send color patterns. We can control it from the web. What I'm going to do with the Cheerlights project is use Twitter. I wanted to walk you through the programming and setup of the Arduino code and the setup of the IRBridge widget that we're going to use to funnel commands from the internet to these color lights. Um, so first we have the Arduino sketch. I did want to point out that I'm using the Arduino 1.0 IDE. So that means you're also going to have to use the GE Color Effects Arduino 1.0 library that's available at dig digitalmisery.com. quickly go over the sketch with you. We need to include the library file at the top. We need to select the pin that our lights are going to be connected to. It's going to be pin 5. You have to specify the number of lights that are on your strand. I bought the uh, strand from Lowe's that has 36 bulbs on it. Uh, once we get everything set up we need to set up the serial port because we're going to use the serial port to receive commands from IOBridge and we're going to use it also for debugging through the serial monitor window. In our main loop, it's rather simple. All we're going to be doing is listening for serial commands from IOBridge. If the serial commands match um, certain keywords that have been set aside in the Arduino, like uh, various colors like white, black, and red, cyan, green, and blue, then the Arduino will pass the color onto the color lights. If you're wondering about color black, black is essentially off. Now on the IOBridge side, what we need to do is create a widget. And widgets are how IOBridge funnels things from the web to relays, to, uh, to receive data from analog inputs, from buttons and switches, to send alerts, so I'm going to create a widget in this case that is going to be a serial widget. And I'm going to click serial out and next. I want to be able to send different types of messages so we're going to use a variable message widget. I need to select the module that it's on which is the cheer lights module and which channel that our Arduino is on. And if you remember we connected the Arduino to channel 4. The last thing is serial setup and the defaults for the widget are perfect for the Arduino. 
9600 baud, a signal of true, and zero pacing between each serial character. Click create widget to finish. Now that we have a widget um, that will send serial data from the web uh, to the Arduino, all we have to do is uh, send one of the commands. We can type blue and then click send. What happened, what happened here is I click send on blue. It was received by the Arduino in real time and the Arduino passed that on to the colors and it set, as you can see, it set the colors to blue. And I can also set to red the same way. Or that famous black color which turns off the lights. And you can take this a lot further as you can see. We can also there's a whole API behind these widgets so I can do this from a browser and this browser can be connected on any network in the world. Um, or I can use this key this ID for this widget and use the API to control this widget. So what we can do is tie this to any kind of web service that's out there. We can use uh, ThingSpeak um, reactions, we can use Twitter controls, we can use hashtags to control our tweets, and what we'll do is connect all of those types of services with this widget ID. For more information about this project, visit cheerlights.com. That's C H E E R L I G H T S.com. And what can happen is if you decide to build this project as well, we can connect our lights together via the internet. I look forward to seeing what you guys are going to make with this.